this universe. We are in this universe. The universe is in us. Yes, the universe is in us. We are part of this universe. We are in this universe. The universe itself exists within us. We are part of this universe. We are in this universe. The universe is in us. Yes, the universe is in us. Every atom in your body came from a star that exploded. You are all stardust. You are all stardust. From a star that exploded. Look up at the night sky. We are part of it. The universe itself exists within us. We are stardust in the highest exalted way. Called by the universe. Reaching out to the universe. We are stardust in the highest exalted way. Reaching out to the universe with these methods and tools of science. Stand in the middle and enjoy everything both ways. The tininess of us. The enormity of the universe. The atoms that make up the human body are traceable, are traceable to the crucible, to the crucible that cooked light elements into heavy elements. These stars went unstable in their later years and then exploded, and then exploded scattering their enriched guts across the galaxy. Look up at the night sky. We are part of it. The universe itself exists within us. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, called by the universe, reaching out to the universe. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, reaching out to the universe with these methods and tools of science. We are stardust in the highest exalted way, in the highest reaching out the universe itself exists within us. Have you ever been outside at night, staring up at the sky, looking at the stars? And did it make you feel small and alone and isolated? And did you keep looking? And did you wonder how you could possibly ever be connected to something that is so vast and so grand? And did it make you a little bit uncomfortable? And did you want to stop looking? As humans, we long for connections, and we will look for them in any place that we can, and sometimes those places turn out to be a little bit strange. Take these gentlemen, for instance. These guys constitute a very small portion of a society of bearded gentlemen, is what they call themselves. They come together every year to have grand celebrations and competitions simply to celebrate the fact that they all have beards. Now, what these gentlemen may not realize, and what you may not either, is that you have far more in common than you may initially suspect. To begin with, we all have an atomic connection to the rest of the universe. That's right, that constitutes a physical connection to the rest of everything. There are many examples in what makes up your atomic structure, but one of my favorites is to look at your hemoglobin right here. And here you will see iron atoms. That's an element on our periodic table. It's one of the most abundant elements in our Earth. And it is also one of the final things expelled when a star explodes. See, we have this physical connection to the rest of the universe. 
But the problem is, very early on, we are all told an unintentional lie, but it's a big one. By show of hands, how many of you took all of these as separate classes? I did. I took these separately. Did you have math in your music class, art in your math class, music majors? You may have a leg up on everyone else in the room right now. The thing is, these things aren't as separate as we like to think that they are. In fact, they're not separate at all. Peter Lawler stated it best when he said that the separation of knowledge into the sciences and the humanities is based on artificial abstractions. Guys, we made it up. These lines in the sand that we've drawn divinating our learning are entirely in our own minds. Or are they? A recent study out of UCL in London has proven that the same portion of your brain that helps you to appreciate beautiful classical music and to understand fine art is also active in the same areas, in the same ways, when viewing and completing higher level complex mathematical equations. So we are physically connected to the earth, to each other, and to the rest of the universe at large. And these things that we have separated are truly connected in our own minds. So doesn't it stand to reason? Don't you think it makes sense that instead of artificially separating mathematics and sciences from everything else, we start celebrating them as the beautiful study of everything which they are? We're starting to see this idea show up on the fringes of our artistic culture. The video that you saw at the very beginning is a beautiful example of this, done by a YouTuber who goes by Melody Sheep. His name is John Boswell, and he's fabulous. And what he's done is he has taken the works of the greats, some seriously heady lectures, and put them over music that he composed and put them with stunning visuals in order to make them engaging, exciting, and make you want to learn. And it was exactly these, this symphony of science, that acted as the inspiration for my project, because I'm an artist, and that's what I do. And when I feel something deeply, that's exactly what I want to share with the rest of the world. And that is why I started The Universe Is In Us, starting just like the universe, from an extremely small point, one two-inch by two-inch canvas, to be exact, spreading outward, entirely propelled by the creativity of those around me. So we came together painting stars and nebulas and quasars and galaxies and anything else you could find hanging out in deep space. And people's ideas were limitless. And while we were creating, we had the beautiful music of Symphony of Science playing overhead in order to keep people's minds on track. And we had lovely pictures from the Hubble Deep Space Telescope in order to inspire us to create. And the conversations, they were incredible. People were talking about things that you would never expect. We had adults and children discussing the wavelengths of light that constitute the color purple and the colors that butterflies can potentially see that are beyond our eyes and why the sun potentially looks green in certain photographs. You see, we were learning. We were learning from each other and we were making connections that we would have never made unless we were sitting in this arena together creating so we were learning, but more importantly, we were having fun. We were having so much fun, and we were connecting with each other, and people were excited, and we were talking to each other and becoming involved, and we were talking about scientific principle, which is not something that people normally equate with something exciting, but it is, because it's the study of everything. And every single person I talked to, no matter the walk of life that they came from, where they started their day, the age group they fell into, or any other statistic you could possibly assign to them, they all left with the same sentiment. Every single one of them. And this is what blew my mind. Every last person left inspired and feeling connected and wanting to learn and create more. Because in a universe that is as vast as ours, that has so many possibilities. Isn't that what we're all looking for? Just a little bit of inspiration. Just some way to feel connected with anyone or anything around us. Because it is so easy to feel isolated in a universe as large as ours, being so small on our planet. It is so very easy to feel alone. I am personally acquainted with that feeling of isolation. I came to a point in my life where I was so vastly depressed and I felt so alone 
that I was either going to find a way that I was connected to anything, or I was going to end my own life. And I started becoming withdrawn in my classes, and I stopped talking to people, and I stopped reading books in classes, because generally I was not reading the book that I was supposed to be reading in classes, but I was reading books nonetheless. And one of my classmates noticed this change in my behavior and came up to me and handed me a book and said, hey, maybe you should try reading this. And he handed me Brian Greene's The Elegant Universe. And I had my very first glimpse of just how connected I was to the rest of everything. And I was excited. I was enthralled. And I was in love with this new idea. Because when you are in love, you tell the world. And that's exactly what I started doing. I'm a barista that works at a coffee shop that talks to my patrons about the newest scientific principles that are breaking through. It's interesting to me how many people will come back to me every single day and ask me if I have learned anything new. And we're constantly learning from each other. And I started digging through mounds of statistics when it came to scientific education. And what I came across was extremely sobering. Most Americans are generally uninterested in scientific discovery and education, to the point that one in four Americans cannot correctly tell you whether the earth revolves around the sun or otherwise. Guys, this is something that we have held true across the board since around 1632. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was general knowledge, but this came directly from the National Academy of Sciences, so I couldn't really quibble. Here's the thing. The cell phone that is either in your hand, purse, or back pocket has vastly more processing power than the original Apollo spaceship, and we use it to watch cat videos. <laughs> Not that I have any major problem with cat videos, but what I've isolated is this giant disconnect between the amount of information and technology we now have access to and what the general populace is actually educated on. But the thing is, now all of you know you know for sure that you are connected to the rest of the universe. And you also know that you are connected to each other and that all of these concepts are entirely connected in your own mind. So you have a responsibility. You have to go out and start those scientifically literate conversations. You have to challenge each other with the knowledge that you have acquired and be open and willing to learn from each other. Because isn't that what we're all looking for? Connections, inspiration, and a bit of learning? And now all of you know, and all of you understand, because most importantly, we are all stardust, every single one of us. The rods and cones in our eyes are directly traceable to the brilliant furnaces that we call stars, which drive life in our universe. We are all connected to each other, to the earth, and to the rest of the universe at large. And most importantly, the universe itself exists within us. Thank you. <laughs>